This is a video tutorial for activity 1b in my touch develop curriculum, how to create a game script. We're going to start like we did in the first activity by selecting or clicking on create script. Once we've done that we're going to select blank from the list just like we did in the first activity and we're going to call this my first game. and that gives us an empty script and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the wall which is your screen basically and we're going to set the background to a certain colour now we could leave it as random if you leave it as random and run that you just get a different colour each time you run it as you can see but what we're going to do is specify the wall so we're going to set it to red and we've run that we've got red and the next thing we're going to do is create the main thing for games, which is a game board. So we're going to add a new line. We're going to select variable because the board is declared as a variable. And we're going to select media. Now, if it's not on the list, there it is there. But if it's not there, you can type it. But if you select media, and we're going to take create landscape board. Okay, you could take create portrait as well, but we're going to create landscape. And it goes to the default Windows phone. 7 resolution of 800 by 480 which we're going to leave it as. You can set that higher if you're aiming for Windows 8 applications but you don't necessarily have to because it does upscale the resolution to the device that you're on. Um, now when we just declare, declare a variable at first it's local. The board is our main thing in the game so we want to be able to access that anywhere so I'm going to click on board and I'm going to do promote to data which changes the var text there and changes it into this symbol which basically just indicates that it's a global variable that I can access anywhere. Now if I run that, because we've, made, we've created a board but nothing changes, we've got to do a few other things. The next thing we want to do is set the board colour. So I'm going to say data, board, I'm going to set the background colour and we're going to set it to black. Okay, and if I run that again, nothing happens because we actually need to post the board to the wall. Now, where I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to events. Events are like main is our main action, which is basically a function in other programming languages, but they're called actions in Touch Develop. Um, events are also functions or actions, but they occur based on a certain event. The one we're going to add is specifically for games, which is a game loop. And this event just basically occurs constantly in the game and repeats again and again and again. Most games have a loop like that that repeats constantly. And in most games, the main thing that's done all the time is that we update the game, which in this case is board evolve. And the other thing we need to do is draw everything, which in this case is board post to wall. And with adding those two lines in, our game is ready to go. And you'll see now that we've got a black bit here, which is indicating actually, indicating actually the game size, or in fact the screen size on your phone. Now to make this a bit more interesting, let's draw something on the screen. So if we go back to main and add a new line in, we'll take a new variable. And the variable that we'll create is from the board. And it's called an ellipse, which is basically a circle or circular shape, it doesn't need to be an actually perfect circle. So I'm going to create a 100 by 100 circle. Right. And I'm going to run that to show what happens. And there we have a circle in the middle of the screen. That's 100 by 100. Um, I'm going to select Sprite. Now you can get it from the list here or you can again just type it. Because it's not coming out of me, I'm just going to type it. Sprite. Well, there it is there. So Sprite. And what we're going to do is set colour. And we're going to set it to orange. And if we run that again, we now have an orange coloured ellipse. I'm going to hit back. Back into our script. Um, now again, that's okay, but it's a bit boring. So what we're going to do next is we're going to turn on gravity. So we're going to add a new line, we're going to access board again, and we're going to set gravity. Now, th 
this goes by the x and y, just as our positions do. In touch develop, x, y is the top left hand corner of your screen and the bottom right hand corner would be 800 by 480. The x position 0 would be this side of the screen, the left side, and x equals 800 would be the right hand side of the screen. y equals 0 would be the top here along the top, and y equals 480 would be along the bottom. Now if I put on 200 on the y, that basically is, like gravity, pulling it straight down the way. Okay, so that's a fair simulation of gravity. If I run that now, you see that the ball drops, and it drops out the screen. Now if you want to stop it leaving the screen, there's a simple way to do that in touch develop. And that is called a boundary. So I'm going to use board, I'm going to create boundary at zero. And zero basically means the distance away from the outside of the screen. So zero means there'll be a boundary around the outside of the screen. If I put it to 20, it would be 20 in. Okay, we'll demonstrate that. So if we run that now, you'll see the ball bounces off the bottom of the screen. And it'll keep bouncing perfectly like that as long as we leave the script running. If I change the boundary to say 50 and run it again, you see the ball, now I did that wrong actually, 50 is actually 50 below the screen, right? So if I want to bring it in, it's actually minus 50. Okay, so run that again. Right, and there we brought the boundary in and the boundary would be 50 in from each side. However, what I really want is I just want it around the edge. So we're gonna put that to zero. Okay, so that's simulating gravity, but unlike in the real world, that ball is going to keep bouncing forever. In the real world, we have air resistance and we have friction acting on things, which is why they wouldn't bounce like that forever. So what we're going to add in is use some more of the built-in physics that's in the game board and we're going to set friction. Okay, and we're going to take the default 0.01. And if we run it again, we now have a more realistic simulation of a ball bouncing, whereas it doesn't bounce the same height, it gradually gets less and less till it comes to rest. Um, we can also set the position and the speed. So let's do that. First of all, what I'm going to show you is setting the speed. So I'm going to take Sprite and I'm going to set speed. Okay, now. It's called set speed and touch develop. To be honest, it's actually the velocity, right? Because it you've got an X and Y. It's basically a vector velocity that you're setting here, not really the speed. Um, speed is a simple way to explain it, though. So it's 400 to the right. What we're doing there is 400 on the X axis to the right and zero. So basically, the ball should move straight to the right. But as you see, it moves straight to the right, but it also goes down, and that's because of gravity. So if I do that again, we've basically got a projectile. So let's set the projectile to fire from the top of the screen. So we're going to set Sprite um, and we're going to set the position to zero, 0, which is actually the top of the screen. And there we have a projectile now, right, falling from the top of the screen. Feel free to play about with that. For instance, if I set the sprite to 480, right, it would start down the bottom. Okay. Um, and if I change the speed, for instance, to say 400, but also minus 200, that will shoot it up the way. We'll try that again. Right, there you go. We've got it kind of going up the way. You can play about with these figures as much as you want. Right. And there we've got one. Okay, just have fun, play a bit with the numbers and see what happens. Okay, so the physics is the physics built in is really quite handy. Um you can also try try changing things. You can change ellipse if you want to be uh, create rectangle for instance. Alright, and try running that again. You see we've now got a rectangle. Okay. Now, to make it more interesting, let's add in an actual graphic, okay? So if you scroll down this and go to the art option here, the art group, and do plus, you've got three options in this. You can search online art pictures, which are pictures that other people using Touch Develop have uploaded. You can search Bing, 
which is just searching the internet, or you can upload your own. You can also go into any search engine at all, find an image and paste the URL in. I'm going to search the ones that are already uploaded because I previously uploaded some. I'm going to look for ball, and there's a bunch of balls appeared here. So I'm going to take that soccer ball there, and there's a preview of it there. I'm going to name it as ball. Okay, and you'll see here it changes to ball. Now if you click on that, the soccer ball is there. I'm now going to go back into main, and I'm going to change it to use. I'm going to change it to use that. Okay. So instead of saying sprite board create rectangle, what I'm going to say is instead of that, I'm going to delete that out using backspace and I'm going to create picture, which will create a sprite based on a picture. Backspace out need picture. Click on the art option here and select your art, which in this case is the ball. And let's run it again. And now we've replaced it with a graphic for a ball, which looks a bit nicer. Okay, and it's very easy to change that. If I want to change that, I can go into here. I can search online and say we wanted a basketball instead. There we go. Select the basketball, run it again. And we've got a basketball in instead. So it's very easy to upload and use pictures. Now, let's make it a bit let's make it look a, lot, a bit nicer as well by changing the background okay so we're going to go to art again we're going to search online art and look for background and see what there is okay so there's a bunch of backgrounds here and just basically choose one uh, Let's see if there's a basketball background. Right, see that one there? Let's use that one, okay, because that's got a hoop on it. So we'll choose that and get this nice picture here. We'll, we'll name it as background. In fact, we'll name it as game background. That's even better. Right, and we've got this game background. We're going to go back up to main, and what we're going to do is instead of setting the color, to black, we're going to delete that out and we're going to say set background picture and we're going to set R and we're going to select game background and run that again. Right, and now we've got it's not really a game as yet, but it's a nice simulation. Okay, if you want, you can play about the numbers till you get the till you get it going in the hoop. Almost. Right, so you get you get the idea. One other wee trick that makes it look nicer is you can actually set a rotation, okay, for the sprite. Now this I'm gonna actually do it in the game loop and the reason for that is because I want it to spin based on how fast it's moving. So I'm going to add a new line in the game loop. I'm going to look for Sprite. Now, I can't access it because it hasn't been changed to, it's not a global variable, so Sprite isn't there. So I need to go back into main. I need to click on where I've declared Sprite. And I'm going to promote that to data, which basically makes it global. Okay. I'm going to run this again. It still works. I'm going to enter game loop. I'm going to click into there and I'm going to select data and sprite and now I can access it. And I'm going to do what's called setting the angular speed. Now you could just set it to a value, for instance 10. If I run that, you'll see what happens. Right, the ball is turning very slowly, as you can see. Right. What I'm going to do is set it to actually match this, the x axis speed. Okay, so I'm going to take Sprite and I'm going to take Speed on the X. Okay, so I'm going to actually set the angular turning speed to the same as the actual speed on the X axis, which gives that, uh, that impression, gives that simulation. 
as it's slowing down, the turning speed slows as well. So if you watch that again, it is quite nice. Okay, and it's a bit more like what would happen if you threw a basketball. Okay, and at that point, that's that activity done. You can play about with it a bit more, but that's all I'm going to show you here. So we can do back, hit back again. You should notice it's saying sinking at the top. And let's go back to our hub, and we've now got activity 1A and the first game, and they're both synced and stored on the cloud. End of activity 1B.